Hey everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, I was just browsing YouTube and I saw this integral uh, from Maths 505. I'm not going to look at it yet. Um, of course, I will. Um, after I do this video, I, I will click on it and give it a like. Um, and uh, it's this integral right here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and try to solve this blind. Um, and I'm going to show you my entire thought process from start to finish, um, whether or not I get a correct, well, if I don't get a correct answer, if I'm not able to do it, you won't be watching this video. So if you're watching this video, I am able to do it. Um, okay, so here we go, and this is going to be the way I solve most integrals. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Desmos. And I'm just going to go ahead and input that integral as most. And I have a terrible memory. So, okay, that's natural log cubed. Natural log of 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Minus x over 1 plus x. And this is cubed in dx. Okay, so apparently Desmos thinks this does converge, and I have no reason to doubt it since Maths 505 featured it on this channel. It probably does converge. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is, well, I mean, I suppose we could break this up into two no, breaking that up into two separate integrals is not going to work. In fact, that would be much more than two separate integrals. That would be like six separate integrals if we tried to break that up using the properties of logarithms. Uh, so right away, I'm just going to let uh, some value u equal 1 minus x over 1 plus x and hope that we get something, um, you know, civilized for a, a dx um and i know i could solve this um using the quadratic formula um i'm not going to do that what i'm going to do instead is i'm just going to paste this into um chat gpt uh version uh using gpt4 i'm just going to paste that right in there and then say solve for x and it should do this with no i don't feel like doing the work. i know i could do it um so that's why i don't really feel bad doing this okay so that's our um okay that's x now okay Solve for dx. That's what I should have done. I should have said solve for dx. Okay, so it says the derivative of x with respect to u is denoted dx. That is, okay, so dx is negative 1 minus u over uh, u plus 1 all squared and then d. So let's down here. This implies that x is equal to okay, negative. We're going to have parentheses. And then it looks like we have. Uh, two separate fractions separated by addition. And the first fraction is 1 minus u over u plus 1 all squared. 1 minus u over u plus 1 all squared. And this is not looking like this is going to be the right approach. And minus 1 over u plus 1, but I won't give up yet. Over u1, and then that's all uh, d. All 
All right, so there's our um, E. And actually, I can already tell by looking at this that this is now going to be at, definitely at least solvable um, using Taylor series. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, plug this substitution in. All right, we, we made our substitution so that this thing right here would be you. And then our DX is, uh, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and distribute this uh, negative sign in there. So that negative sign would switch this to a uh, U minus 1, and then there would just be a negative sign here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and replace this DX with its U. Uh, and you can see, ooh, hmm, hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, I see what, I did not change the, the bounds of integration. So that's why, <laughs> that's why we got the, uh, the negative version of our original I, and I will label this I, by the way. Okay. Um, that's why I like using Desmos. It really helps you identify um, when you're making a mistake in your thinking. Okay, so obviously right here, I forgot to change the bounds of integration. All right, so if u is 1 minus x over 1 plus x, if we plug in 1, we will get 0. This becomes a 0, and if we plug in 0, we will get a 1. Uh, and then we introduce a negative sign and switch the bounds of integration. There we go. Okay. So yeah, um, from here... Uh, Let's go ahead and split this up into three separate integrals. Okay. Um, so i is equal to that. So i is going to be equal to, let's see, the integral from 0 to 1 of our first integral will be natural log u cubed. Uh, times u uh, divided by u plus 1 all u. Sorry, that's minus. That should be minus. Uh, and then plus uh, something very similar except now we do not have this u. Uh, and then again, we will have plus something similar. And we will simply have the natural log u on top. And this will not be squared. There we go. You can see that it's true. Um, I hope you're all following along so far. All right. Um, so now if you've, if you've watched this channel, uh, you probably know what I'm going to do. Okay, and now what I would like to do is uh, break out a couple of Taylor series. Um, of course we know this. The sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over uh, u plus 1. Uh, that is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, um, let me start over here. So 1 over u plus 1 is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to t of negative 1 to the n x to That's fairly well. Um, a little less well known is this that one over u plus one squared is equal to the sum as n goes from zero infinity infinity of um, negative one to the n times x to the n times and i'm just going to go ahead and verify this uh for you here 
though, I mean, I'm sure you all believe me that this is true. I'm just going to go ahead and grab that one. Oh, and the, these, this is true um, for the, the absolute value of x being less than 1 uh, for, for both of these. Okay, so we, we have our, our graph of our function 1 over x plus 1, and then let's just go ahead and graph, uh, oops, this was actually supposed to be a, this is actually supposed to be a u. So now let's, let's go ahead and graph this function. And Desmos does not like infinities, and I'll change that to an x, and then I'll just, yeah, we, we can see that that is pretty clearly uh, equal to 1 over x plus 1 on the interval uh, negative 1 to non-inclusive. Um, and then let's just uh, verify the next one. Okay, and this is going to be the same thing, except this is uh, 1. It does not look like... I do something wrong? Hmm. Uh, this is not 1 plus x, this is 1 plus n. Okay, I don't know how I made that mistake, but uh, yeah, so there we go. So that's true. Um, so what this means is we can take, uh, well, actually it doesn't mean anything yet. Uh, what I would like to do is create two functions um, in terms of t. Um, let's create f of t, and that will be equal to um, the integral from 0 to 1 of, let's see, um, x to the t over, no, we'll say that's u, we're in u right now, u to the t over u plus 1 u. All right. So there's that function right there. And then let's create another function g of t, which is equal to the integral from 0 to u to the t divided by u plus 1 squared e u. All right. Now let's... Uh, Let's figure out what i is in terms of these. Okay. Well, let's take f triple prime of t. Um, yeah, using the, the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, we would have f triple prime of t is equal to the third, the integral from 0 to 1 of the third derivative with respect to t of this integrand right here. Uh, and all that would have the effect of doing is uh, adding natural log u cubed to our function. Okay, so our f triple prime of t is equal to this. Now, g triple prime of t, likewise, would simply be this. Um, we just get a natural log u cubed. Okay. All right, what now? Um, now we can relate i in terms of the third derivative of our functions f and g neglected. Um, okay, so I'm going to delete this just to save a little bit of space. Uh, we can see now that i can be related to the third derivative of our functions f and g. i is going to be equal to, well, let's see. This is our g triple prime evaluated at 1, right? So we have minus 
g triple prime evaluated at one, right? Because if we took this, this is g triple prime, and we evaluated at one, uh, we would get back that first integral right here. We evaluated g triple prime at one. We would... Okay, and then plus, uh, this is g triple prime evaluated at zero, right? Because if we evaluated g triple prime at the point t is equal to zero, um, we would get our second integral. And then plus, well, let's see, this is f triple prime evaluated. Okay, great. So now we need to um, figure out some other representations for g triple prime and f triple prime, which means we need to find new representations for uh, g and f. Okay, so that's where our Taylor series comes into play. All right. So I'm just going to delete all that. So now I want to find g triple prime, but represented as a Taylor or a sum, an infinite sum. I shouldn't always say Taylor series. Uh, it's definitely going to be some sort of infinite polynomial. All right. So, oops. Um, we actually want to keep. I only want to. That. All right. So our f of t is also going to be equal to this thing, but we will replace the 1 over u plus 1 with. Oh dear, what have I done? Gotten rid of all the Taylor series representations of all my functions. That was silly of me. Um, okay, I'll just have to. Re uh, I'll have to to do them again. So f of t is also equal to the integral from zero to one of u to the t. Uh, and now instead of one over u plus one, I will put the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. I have such a hard time spelling it for some reason, or at least typing it. Uh, and that is negative 1 to the n times x to the n. And then, of course, we have dx, uh, du. And this is also u. OK. Um, this u to the t can be brought inside our sum um, like this. So I have t plus n. And I'm not going to go into the reasons why you can switch the summation and integration notation there. Uh, but regardless, you, uh, you, can, you can, you can switch it in that case. Um, and then I bring that negative 1 to the n outside the integral because it's not dependent on u. And then I evaluate that integral, which will just give us a denominator inside our sum of n plus t plus 1. Okay, so that's our f of t. Um, and since, well, you know what, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, no, that, that can't be right. Well, yeah, no, it is. Okay, so that's our f of t, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, verify that by plugging in, like, maybe a 1 and then a 0. And seeing if that matches up with our original f of t. And you can see that it does perfectly. Um, like I said, Desmos does not like infinity. So you just have to plug in big numbers. Um, all right, so let's now do the same thing with our g of t. Uh, okay, so our g of t is this. 
Um, we had previously noted that um, 1 over u plus 1 squared was equal to, well, I'll just show you. g of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the t times the sum as n goes from 0 to n and t of, um, okay, what was that? That was u to the n times negative 1 to the n and then times 1 plus n. And then, of course, we have all right, and then uh, let's go ahead and bring this u to the t inside our sum as an exponent on u. Um, we can switch the integration and summation notations for reasons. Um, we can bring this negative 1 to the n times 1 plus n outside our integral since it does not depend on u. And then we evaluate this integral, simply giving us a denominator of t n plus t plus 1. And again, we will go ahead and verify this by 1. Okay. So it appears I've made some sort of mistake here. All right, it appears I've run into some uh, some sort of problem, uh, and I'm, I'm going to show you what the problem is right now. Uh, I paused the video for a second and, uh, and researched this. <clears throat> um, but I'm just going to power through with my process, um, and I'm going to say that g of t is equal to, well, we have this, except we are, we are going to replace this 1 over u plus 1 all squared, with what we previously uh, showed to be the integral from 0 to infinity of um, uh, uh, negative 1 to the n u to the n times uh, 1 plus n. And then we can use. Um, we can bring this u to the t inside as an exponent u t plus n and then we can switch the bounds of integration and summation uh, and bring out all the stuff that does not depend on u and then evaluate this integral which will give us divided by uh, one plus t And we can see that these are not exactly equal. Um, um, and, and I'll show you that, that they're not. Um, if we evaluate that at 1, look what we get over there. We get function, then at 2, it goes above the purple function. This actually uh, oscillates above and below depending on um, the value of n. So that's not really great. Um, but you know what? We're just going to go with it. We're going to see what happens, and we're going to see, hopefully, something will cancel out. Um, so I'm just going to put... Uh, um, and I know this is not rigorous. Just trying to get an answer here. Okay, so there's our g of t, and um, there's our f of t. Okay, so now let's. Okay, now maybe we we can find a a better uh, representation for g of t. Uh, we know that g of t is supposed to equal this, right? Okay. Well, that means they should be the same for all values of t. 
Um, so let's go ahead and evaluate them at t is equal to zero. Um, well, we know that g of zero in this case would be the integral from zero to one of one over u plus one all squared, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and really quick find the, the value for uh, using Wolfram alpha, and I will be right back. Okay, so that's equal to one. The g of zero is equal to one. Um, well, that means that if we plugged in uh, zero for this, for this function right here, we had better get one half if, we're, if these two functions are going. Okay. So, um, if we plug in t is equal to zero, this, um, we get g of zero is equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity. Infinity of negative one to the n times n plus one over n plus one. And, and literally we just get this. Okay. Um Hmm. So, uh, for the remainder of this video, um, and obviously when I post the video solving this problem, I will have a, a better explanation for what's going on here. But for the remainder of this video, we will be treating this, if we encounter this by itself, we will be treating it as though it's equal to one half. So, um, I'm just going to make a little note here that basically um, this is going to be true for the remainder of this video and for this problem in general. Okay, so we'll, we'll just be treating this as true. And I know it's, it's not. Um, like I said, for the purposes of solving this problem, it's going to be considered true. Uh, and we'll just plow, we'll, we'll just go forward, um, assuming that that's true. Okay. So, let's continue. Alright. So, now we need to find G triple prime of T. Okay. And we'd like to use the, uh, sum form of our g triple of our g of t to find g triple okay so g triple prime t is going to be equal to the third derivative with respect to t of this thing okay well the only thing that depends on t is right there in the denominator um so if we try if we took the first derivative we'd recover a negative one, and then this would become squared. And then if we took a second derivative, we'd recover a negative two, and this would become, and then taking the third derivative, we would recover a negative, Three, and this would be the fourth. So that is G triple prime of T. Okay. Uh, well, our I includes an F triple prime evaluated at some value. So let's find F triple prime of T. That is going to be equal to the third derivative with respect to t, term by term, of this function right here. Okay, taking the first derivative, we would get a negative, and this would become 
squared. The second derivative, we would recover a negative 2, and this would become cubed. And the third derivative, we would recover a negative 3, and this would become fourth. Okay. So now we can take this, copy this down here, in fact, actually, and paste it down here. And underneath, I will say that i is equal to negative, all right, negative this thing, put a parenthesis there, evaluated at the point 1. So I literally just put a 1 in for t. Um, and then plus our g triple prime right here. I'll put a parenthesis. Plus g triple prime. Here's our g triple prime. Evaluated at the point uh, t is equal to zero. Uh, so I'll just put a zero there. And then we have plus f triple prime. Where's our f triple prime? That's right here. Oh, I forgot the parentheses. Plus our f triple prime. Evaluated at the point zero. So I'll just put a zero in um, and now, hopefully, let's see, if I plug in, let's just plug in 10, all of these things. And hopefully we get close. Oh yeah, that is very, very close, isn't, isn't it? Yes. All right. We are on the right track here, people. Okay, so now um, let's let's just increase this to maybe a thousand. Once it's in summation notation purely, um, uh, Desmos has no problem calculating extremely large values of um, these things. So let's. Go ahead and just copy this right below and see how close we are. Oh, we're we're very we're very 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 close. Okay, so this is this is more than likely uh, true. All right, and now let's refine this a little bit. Um, let's just do some algebra here. Okay, so a minus times a minus is just a plus. So we got six. And then this will just become a minus. And then this will just minus. All right, what else can we do? Well, um, I noticed that these two things are almost the same. Um, except for, well, this right here is n plus 2. This is n plus... Oh, and of course, this is n plus 1. And then what I'd like to do is add 1 to our index on n here, and, and then subtract one from all the n's inside our function. We just get an n here, becomes an n plus one. And then don't forget, we, act, we also uh, subtracted one from this index on negative one. So this would be a negative. Okay. So now to make uh, this one a little bit closer to this one, what I'd like to do is again, I'd like to resubtract one from the index, except this time uh, I would like to treat that as having simply added the n is equal to zero term of this thing 
to our, uh, our value for i. So to compensate that, we would need to subtract the n is equal to zero term of that thing from our, our, uh, our i. And of course, we can see that that's not necessary uh, because our n equals zero term, simply zero due to that n. Okay. So now we have a common denominator here uh, in these two sums of n plus 1 to the fourth. All right, and we have a minus 6 and a minus 6. So I believe we can just put a 2 right there and get rid of this thing. So now, uh, let's see, this is minus 6 times the sum is, and again, this is 1,000, uh, it's, that's, that's really a placeholder for infinity, um, again, Desmos does not like using infinity, uh, but we can see that this is simply going to add a, that, uh, and get rid of that and then we have a factor of two a one plus n this is uh 12 and now we have a common factor of one plus n on the top and bottom let's just see and that is the answer um i'm not sure what maths 505 uh, got, uh, but whatever he got, it is equivalent to this sum. Um, I'll do some more research on this sum and, and, and see what it's equal to. Um, but yeah, there you go. That, that's, uh, that's my process for solving things like this. Uh, this was a, a completely blind, um, run through of this problem, and you wouldn't be seeing it if I did not actually get a semi-satisfactory solution um, as you can see i did um, and it is in fact equal to this sum um well not this sum precisely uh it's it's equal to this sum uh but there you go guys um i hope uh i hope you guys enjoyed this video and this little insight into my thought process when I when I solve integrals like this. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that. So we will see you next time.